Hello, welcome to the Reproductive Science Center of the San Francisco Bay Area. In this web videocast, we present a virtual tour of our clinic. I'm Dr. Lou Weckstein, Medical and IVF Director, and I'll be walking you through some of the patient processes here at Reproductive Science Center. From our lobby, you'll go to the office of an RSC physician for a private consultation. This is our opportunity to get to know you better and hear your story. Infertility is a very personal challenge, and we treat every patient as an individual. For many of our patients, the journey has been long and hard, so it's important for us to spend time with you one-on-one -on -one and learn about your medical history, of course, but also to understand more about your individual circumstances. Infertility treatment is about much more than doctors and nurses and lab coats and laboratories. It's about you, and we want you to always feel that at RSC, you're the first priority. During your consult, your doctor also reviews your medical records and does a preliminary examination. This exam includes a vaginal ultrasound to evaluate your uterus and ovaries. If a patient elects to pursue treatment, we order lab tests to evaluate various hormone levels and do preconceptual blood testing. The blood for these tests can be drawn here at RSC during the first visit or on a later visit, or the female and male partners can go to a lab convenient to them at near home or work. At this point, some patients decide to proceed with intrauterine insemination, or IUI. Others decide instead to go on to IVF, in vitro fertilization. IUI is a much simpler and shorter process, although pregnancy rates in the general population are much lower than those with IVF. In any case, at RSC, we take extra care to give patients the best information we can so that they can make their own decisions on the treatment they feel is right for them. Before beginning the IVF cycle, we conduct a uterine sounding to evaluate the health and condition of the uterus. The male partner provides a semen specimen for preliminary evaluation as well. At this stage, the real work of IVF begins, requiring extra effort from the patient. Each IVF patient has to take medication shots in order to develop multiple mature eggs. These shots are given daily in the lower abdomen with a tiny needle usually by the patient or her partner. During this time, the patient makes frequent visits to one of our offices in order to monitor the progress of egg development in the ovarian follicles. When the eggs are mature, an egg retrieval procedure is scheduled. Egg retrieval is a very common routine procedure performed here in our outpatient surgical center under light anesthesia. As the anesthesia takes effect, a doctor uses a vaginal ultrasound probe to collect fluid from the ovaries using a needle into a test tube. The patient feels no discomfort during this process. At this point, a nurse passes the tube with the fluid to an embryologist who then looks for eggs under the microscope. The typical patient is able to produce anywhere from five to 25 eggs for egg retrieval. After locating the eggs, the embryologist rinses them and places them into a holding dish. Approximately four to six hours after the egg retrieval, we inseminate the eggs with one of two insemination techniques. One is a standard IVF insemination, which sperm and eggs are combined in a petri dish. The other is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, in which an individual sperm is injected into the egg under a microscope using a tiny needle. We use ICSI for male patients with low sperm count or motility. Once the egg has been fertilized, the embryologist begins a series of daily checks and monitoring of embryo development. At this point, the patient is on standby, as we have to decide whether to perform an embryo transfer at either day three of development or day five or six, the blastocyst stage, depending on how the embryos are growing. When the decision to transfer the embryos is made, the patient returns to our center for a very brief outpatient procedure. No sedation is needed this time although the patient is asked to keep her bladder full to facilitate the transfer. With the help of our embryologist, we select the best embryos and transfer one or more, depending on the age of the patient, as well as the development of the embryos. For transfer, we insert a small catheter into the uterus through the vagina and place the selected embryos into the uterus under ultrasound guidance. It's all over in a matter of minutes. But then comes the hard part, waiting. In 9 to 11 days, the patient returns for a blood test to determine if she's pregnant. If the news is good, 
Two weeks later, she comes back for an ultrasound to confirm the pregnancy. And this is when we find out if it's twins. For me, this is one of the best parts of what I do, sharing the happy news with the patient, who is now ready to go on to her obstetrician for pregnancy care. There are many more steps and details in the IVF process, of course, and you can learn more about them on this website. For more about what happens in the laboratory, navigate to the videocast IVF Lab Demystified with Dr. Kristen Ivani here in the Interactive Learning Center. For more information about IVF medications and procedures, point your mouse at the navigation button for patients at the top of any page on this website, and then navigate to a number of choices of topics. From everyone at Reproductive Science Center, thank you for spending time with us.